Tom Hartman here on the best of the rest of economic and labor news. You need to know this. If you thought the 2013 sequester was a disaster for our country, you should be pretty thankful that there's a Democrat in the White House. Last week, the United States held a vote a to decide which proposals and policies would make it into the upper chamber's budget. Although the document is non-binding, it should cause some very real concern over what happens if Republicans should win in 2016. According to the Senate, Republican, uh, Senate Republicans, our nation should stash another $5 trillion, excuse me, slash another $5 trillion in domestic spending, all while handing out more taxpayer dollars to the military and lowering taxes on the rich. To put that number in perspective, consider that the 2013 sequester cut $1.5 trillion from our spending, and that was enough to slash the budgets of everything from the Centers for Disease Control to Border Security to Head Start. That massive cut cost our nation real jobs, and it slowed our economic growth. But all that means little to Republicans who want to destroy our social safety net, all while giving the wealthy a tax cut and boosting the paychecks of their buddies in the defense industry. $5 trillion in cuts is almost unimaginable, unless we consider a nation that stops protecting Americans from poverty and disease, and a nation that values war profiteers and billionaires over everything. For the next two years, we have a president who can stop the worst of this legislation. But the time is now to make sure that we have another Democratic leader in 2016. If we don't stop the Republicans from destroying the social programs and agencies that make our country great, we may not get a chance to repair them before they're gone for good. For the last decade, the ACLU has been fighting to expose the torture and abuse that has been committed in our name. Last week, U.S. District Judge Alvin Hellerstein finally ruled that we have a right to see the evidence of these torturous acts. For the past 10 years, the ACLU has been locked in a legal battle over their Freedom of Information Act request, which asked the government to release photographs and records relating to the torture and even death of prisoners held by our nation around the world since 2013. The government denied that FOIA request, saying that the disclosure would endanger Americans, Judge Hellerstein concluded that the government failed to prove how Americans would be in danger and ordered that the photographs and records be released to the ACLU. That group's legal director, Jamil Jafar, said giving the government that kind of sensorial power would have implications far beyond this specific context. As Americans, we have a right to know what has been done in our name, and this ruling is a victory for justice. Quite a few employers have moved away from actual paychecks to electronic payroll cards, and workers have been hit hard by fees and other problems. Finally, one state is stepping up to do something about this, and employees in Washington State may soon be better off as a result. Earlier this month, the Washington State Legislature advanced a bill that would make sure all workers have an alternative to these predatory debt-like cards, or debit-like cards, in addition to federal legislation that may soon require all employees to disclose the fees and charges associated with these cards, workers should have real protection against the payroll card scheme. Those in favor of the cards claim that workers don't, who don't have bank accounts can avoid check cashing fees and have the ability to buy things online. But opponents point out that the, charges, the cards charge exorbitant fees for cash withdrawals, balance inquiries, and even calling customer service. No one should be subjected to these unjust fees because they have a job or want a job, and it's great news that at least one state is moving to protect their workers. Indiana is finding out that businesses aren't all in favor of discrimination. In the wake of Governor Mike Pence signing a so-called religious liberty bill in his state, the list of companies standing up for LGBT rights just continues to grow. By last Friday, huge organizations like Apple, Yelp, and even the NBA have come out against Pence's bill, saying that it legalizes discrimination. Over the weekend, the CEO of Angie's List put a stop to that company's expansion's plans in Indiana, saying that they are looking for alternative locations to their headquarters in other states. Even religious groups like the Disciples of Christ denomination said that the bill is distressing and that it is causing them to reconsider their decision to hold their 2017 gathering in Indianapolis. Regardless of how lawmakers, including Governor Mike Pence, try to spin this law as anything but LGBT discrimination, these businesses and the public who they serve won't be fooled. Good on these groups for refusing to discriminate against someone just because of who they love. And finally, Republican governors all around our country are slashing education to cover the cost of tax breaks for the rich. But Governor Mark Dayton of Minnesota wants to invest a portion of his state's budget surplus in universal pre-K. 
Rather than dishing out tax breaks, the gov- Democratic governor actually raised taxes on the top 2% in his state, and it's turned out to be quite a success. Republicans in Minnesota balked at the tax hike idea, saying that businesses would leave that state, but that has not happened. In fact, higher wages, stronger unions, and better education systems have lured businesses to the state, and that's paying off in terms of more investment in the people of Minnesota. Universal pre-K would ensure that every child starts school with stronger skills and allow parents to work more hours instead of caring for kids. Families get the help they need to be stronger, and Minnesota gets a better educated workforce. This is what happens when progressive ideas are allowed to become real policy. Governor Dayton has proven that these ideas work for the state of Minnesota, so let's keep fighting to implement these nation- policies nationwide. And that's the way it is for the week of March 30th, 2015. I'm Tom Hartman on the Economic and Labor News.